So as I was thinking about trying to do this independent publishing route, I thought I need somebody that's got the train tracks because I've been building the train. I hired a professional story development coach. I hired a top editor, but now I needed to see if I get this train to the destination to the readers. And that's when I discovered April. I guess it's time to switch over to put Rick in our little hot seat there to share his, some of his experiences. So I thought since we're writers and we hear all the time, show, don't tell, that rather than me telling you about what I've been doing for the last year, I thought I would show you. On May 4th, a year ago, I had just met April, actually just through a webinar. I never really met her. So we had a phone call. I saw her in a webinar and I thought, OK, I need to work with this person. And so... I got in touch with her and immediately got acquainted and decided once again, I definitely needed her help. May 4th of 2022, I had a manuscript. I had a series that my grandson has been working on with me. So I write books with grandkids. So five years ago, he decided that he and I were going to write a book together. I had published two military history books, and I never planned to write books with kids. But he suddenly decided that he and I were going to write a book about dragons and dinosaurs. And he actually, at eight years old, had a lot of it mapped out. So that began our journey to develop Star Life Keepers. So a year ago, I had 72,000 words for a mid-grade epic fantasy. I had the world building, and I had my grandson's drawings. And then, as you'll see, a lot's happened in the 12 months. I had spent a lot of years studying independent publishing, even though my first two history books were military books, were traditionally published, one with the University Press. But when I started working on thrillers, I discovered that this wasn't going to be that easy. So I began to study on a parallel track, independent publishing, self-publishing. So you can see on the left is one of the people I study quite a bit is Joanna Penn. And and there's a series of other books that I had studied. At the bottom, there are five books by a writer called Craig Martell, who I would highly recommend. But one of the lessons here, just because I could read and study about self-publishing, it didn't mean that I could do it. And so the fourth year of our journey, we spent trying to get traditionally published. And that's when I knew we needed to find another route. I spent a decade in working in China. My friend in China builds the speed trains. So you can see at the bottom, the speed trains in China go 180 miles an hour. There's a train in Shanghai that I've been on that goes 240 miles an hour. So as I was thinking about trying to do this independent publishing route, I thought, I need somebody that's got the train tracks, because I've been building the train. I hired a professional story development coach. I hired a top editor. But now I needed to see if I get this train to the destination, to the readers. And that's when I discovered April. And so little did April know that she was going to become a speed train partner, because I'm likely older than most of you. So I have less time. I've got seven grandkids, and I've got to be moving fast to get these books to market. So April's been my speed train partner. So on the left is, you can see I highlighted July 31st, 2018. So I've chronicled my five-year journey with my grandson. And I'll show you some of the before and after pictures. So on the left, I took my grandson, Brady, who was eight at the time, and two other grandsons on what they thought was just a, a visit to the planetarium until I showed up the day before at their house with a study guide. So then we were on a field trip going to the planetarium because we had figure out if we were going to move into this fantasy world with dragons and dinosaurs, how we're going to get the kids there. So we needed to study time travel and star travel. You can see on the left-hand side, it's an armosphere, which was an ancient navigation instrument. You'll see it in that that same concept in a lot of movies like Harry Potter. And that was interesting to us. Then in the middle, you can see we have a little drawing. And so in terms of remedial drawings, this was the idea (laughs) that we came up with was a star globe like the Armosphere from Harry Potter. And then inside is a celestial globe that you'll see that's glass that used to have the etchings of the planets on and, and the constellation. So that's what this was. It was a combination of an Armosphere and then this celestial globe inside. On the right side, you can see what happened since then, which is in the last year, our artists in India have done an amazing job, as you can see, of rendering our, our words and our ideas and making it come to reality. And you'll see that Orion is highlighted because the three belts of Orion are the key because the kids star travel through the middle star in Orion's belt. So that was our star travel solution, a star globe. The next thing that happened is we were world building and I was trying to find out from my grandson, okay, you want to 
make a book about dragons and dinosaurs, you do know they don't typically appear in the same book or movie. And he was in my office at home and he said, he'll figure it out. And then he left. So then I'd figure out how we're going to put the dragons and the dinosaurs into the same story. This particular before and after, I think, is fun because we're getting ready to launch. So that's why this was good timing because I set up a Mm -hmm. website and I'm launching. So I've got to go back to my chronicle to figure out how to tell people the story. So on the right side, you can see Jason. He came up with the three kids in the very beginning. So Jason, he drew a picture of at eight years old. That was his picture of Jason on the right side. And then underneath, he created this dragon girl that was a shape-shifting human that turned into a dragon. But Jason was friends with her. They went on picnics together. But he didn't know that she was a dragon until the reveal. So the artist captured the reveal of Jason finding out his friend, Kada, is actually a dragon. And then behind his friend is the five-headed dragon. You'll see a toy in the lower left-hand corner there. I think for Brady, that was his inspiration piece. We found this in a toy store, this purple five-headed action figure dragon. He said, okay, this is it. This is what we need to build the story around. Until we did the artwork, I don't think we really understood how this was going to be depicted. And so this was a very key part of the work for the last year. And you can see especially the eyesight and the eye line is very connected between the little dragon and then Jason because they're friends. And so we wanted that emotional connection. So at the very beginning, we had the good guys, and now we needed the bad guys. And so we did a lot of searching on the internet, and we came across this half saber-toothed tiger and half human in 2018. And that was his next epiphany. He said, okay, this is it. We need to make the bad guys need to be this humanized dinosaurs. And he said, they're hybrids. And I said, what's a hybrid? He said, my tablet games, we combine dinosaurs. So there's purebred combo dinosaurs, and then there's human and dinosaur creatures. He invented this for our book with these humanized dinosaurs. So you can see what's happened in the five years. We've now had the artist visualize what we wrote about. So you can see three different creatures. One, the young dinosaur military commander on the horse, a tiger captain, and then the woman velociraptor that ends up attacking Jason in a mountain scene. So the other thing we did as far as world building is we, in the very beginning, since I had specially developed maps for my two history books, I wanted maps to be a key part of this. So my grandson and I developed a map of the journey in the beginning. So on the left, you can see a hand-drawn map that we had concocted. And on the right side in the mountains is where the elves live. So now you can see on the right side, the artists in India were able to not only do a black and white for us, but then they also, for the website, did a colorized version. And we did some zoom-in scenes. And the right side, you'll see a five-headed dragon on top of a mountain. And underneath is the village Summerlee where the elves live. And then on top, the next call out is Fort William. And that's the big grand battle scene at the end of the book. So we had illustrations that were the good guys, the bad guys, and then now we have the maps. So we felt like we were making good progress, but we hadn't pulled it all together. I thought I would show this because working with kids, obviously, is a bit like hurting saber-toothed tigers. So Mm -hmm. I've got to sit them down. And in this case, here's a drawing. And if you look at the top, you'll see a snail with two antennae sticking out. So he decided he wanted to have an eyeless ghost serpent in the book. And so we mapped out this scene with his sister, Amanda, and his shape-shifting dragon friend, Kata, going across a bridge, and then this eight-armed, eight-tentacled, eyeless ghost serpent trying to attack the girls. And so this comes near the end of the book. So while Jason is trying to kill a flying Tyrannosaurus Rex, his sister's trying to escape from this eyeless ghost serpent to retrieve the plant that will save the queen's life. So I showed this one just as an example of scenes that were just a hand-drawn scene that suddenly with the artist, we got to see it come to life. So then that's the grand reveal here is very few people have seen this. April and I have been working on trying to pull this all together. We have the, you can see the front cover and the back cover. Wisely, because she has the train tracks and she is the guide and the speed train partner, she knew that because we were doing a book that's probably 370 pages long, that we really needed to get some proofs ahead of time before we ran out and suddenly started trying to sell this book. But it was a wise decision, since I know nothing about this. April guided me through the process, and we kid around that a lot of times she's a Sherpa. So I'm trying to climb the Himalayan mountains, Mount Everest, 
and I have no clue how to get there. She's got the base camp set up and she takes me up the mountain with all the equipment and she goes with me. So she went with me to help me get these books from Amazon, again, which I know nothing about. I probably have pressed the wrong button. It would have been publicly available around the world. So we ordered a proof from Amazon and it's print on demand. And who would have thought, again, we could have single books printed with the same quality that the big publishers in New York City would have. But it came back. It was extraordinarily well done. Ingram is the company that actually publishes a lot of the New York City publishers. And they set up a side business a while back called Ingram Spark to work with independent authors. So we get the same quality and print on demand as you would a big publisher, but we do it as an independent. So you can see the front cover. We got the three kids, Jason, his cousin, Lisa, and his sister, Amanda. They're being attacked by pterodactyls. And you can see at the bottom is the joining together of the dragons and dinosaurs with the chronicles and our names. And then on the back cover, we have the five-headed dragon that was his centerpiece fighting against a flying Tyrannosaurus Rex and a flying Velociraptor, kind of like Jurassic Park. It's a combination of Narnia and Lord of the Rings, but then a mashup with Aragon, flying dragon, dragon riding, Jurassic Park, et cetera. So there's the back cover. So then we had a little inset of the map. And one of the advantages of April's model is that this train track that she has built, we own parts of the track. So when I had all of this art done, and if I did it in the United States with a Disney illustrator, I would not have owned the art. And what did I know? I would have just gone into this. But April had gone down that track and came up with a better solution, which are global illustrators who agree to sign the contracts where we own the art. So if I decide at the designer stage, like I did here, that I wanted to put an inset of the map, I didn't have to get anybody's permission because I own the art. And so now that I'm working on the website, it's even more profound because any of the artwork that I have, I can crop, I can show it in different ways on the website, and I don't need anybody's permission. So it really, I think, to a large degree, is very liberating because it unleashes the creativity. Mm -hmm. And I think that, as again, I started on this journey, we had the ideas from Brady and the words mostly from me. And then we had the illustrations and the maps. But then the next part was the design. So April's uh, designer have done just a remarkable job of taking the artwork from India, but then now putting it into a more distinctive appeal to the front cover. And so that's on the right side. So when we all the way up until January 2nd, the kids were on the left side and out of the picture. The owner of the company in the Philippines did her Photoshop magic. And as April and I watched, she redesigned the cover in front of us. And so she moved the kids into the middle. She made them more prominent. She made the title more prominent. And April and I both said, okay, this is it. And then the best test was my grandson loved it. And then his parents love it. So we're there. So anyway, so that's my quick journey from May 4th a year ago, having none of this <laughs> other than a 72,000 word manuscript and some kid drawings. And uh, now we have, I think, a very professionally done book. So anyways, thank you. Here's the book. I feel so There's excited. Rick. I've been with Rick, Rick was in my course, so I'm like, I'm so excited yeah. that I get to actually yeah. see it come through. We started through. this last summer, and I yeah. had nothing. So now, actually, as we're looking at it, yeah, That's so it's, it's been a journey. I Again, now that I'm done with my overview, I can tell the real story is that I've, I used to run companies. <laughs> so when I thought about self-publishing, I thought, if I can run companies and businesses, I sure as heck can master this. But that was not the case because this is a very complex world. I, I really believe that if I would have done this myself, first of all, I wouldn't be as far. I wouldn't have as professional as I got illustrators and designers. But I don't know how I would have learned all this in a speed train kind of mode. And so I think doing this fast, I've been able to benefit from the train tracks with the 1,400 authors that have already gone through the model, the program. But then April then was able to coach me and mentor me so that we were able to move more quickly. So I have, I'm working on, since now I've got the spirit of independent publishing, I'm working on four other books with my grandkids. It's so addicting. That's what April and I said yesterday. It's addicting. <laughs> because you get yeah, to see because you, a lot of you decided books. not to do one at a time. It was you, a lot of the stuff you were doing because yeah. your book had to go to editing and a lot of other things where 
you had to wait a while for it to come back. So I think, Rick, you had a lot of irons in the fire and things moving all at the same time. And we were, it was quite exciting to go through that with you. No, but you know what I love too, because I think we got some of the questions about it being a 12 week program, even though Rick took the course, he didn't, there's no pressure that you must have it completed at the end of the 12 weeks. Right. Exactly. So I took the course and uh, we started in June. We started working on the cover in August. And then I decided that these artists were so magnificent that I was going to delay the book to get more of their artwork into the book. So originally it was a book with a map in the front and back cover and the words, which is really what mostly you'd get with an epic fantasy. But seeing their artwork and how they brought the words alive changed my thinking. So then we delayed the book to get the best artwork we could. Kids reading, and especially at that age, around fifth grade, they're coming out of the, what I call the potty humor books in Captain Underpants and kind of comic books, graphic novels, and then moving towards real books, novels. And I think this will be a good bridge. So the dragon reveal scene was one of the first ones we did. And that one is special because of the connection with Brady and the five-headed dragon. And then this dragon girl that, you know, he drew the picture in 2018. But I think maybe I'll show another scene. So this one is a a good example of the artwork changing the visualization of the words. So I'd had this scene. We had mapped it out. It was in a park. The bridge was to the right. The tree was to the right. There was a lake. And then there was a lawn where the pterodactyl tries to kidnap the crown princess, who is Jason's cousin, Elisa. And when we sent the words to India and the artists spent time thinking through what we were doing, they came out with this scene, which was they put it on top of the bridge. And so this was definitely not what I had written about and what we had agreed upon, me and Brady. So what happened was when I, when Brady and I looked at it, we said, this is actually better because there's more action rather than a flat lawn. There's the bridge. And um, what happened here, once we got most of the illustrations done, In December, then, I ended up going back and rewriting the book (laughs) because I had to put in changes to the scenes that the words would reflect what the artists had done. But probably the funniest thing is this didn't exist. This was not a chapter in the book. And so as we began to do the cover, the front cover was originally this, with the kids with their backs to the five-headed dragon and the creatures. And I have a Disney author that lives nearby that was has been our coach. We met with him in the fall, November, and he said, he said, that's beautiful. But he said, I think there needs to be more action. So he mapped out this scene. He said, why don't you have the pterodactyl swooping in? And since we're in this medieval world and the kids are archers, they can be shooting and protecting themselves against these flying, attacking pterodactyls. So that's what April and I then mapped out with the artists. And we ended up with this particular scene, which we liked, but this scene did not exist in the book. (laughs) So then I had to create the pinnacle scene in the book that's tied to the front cover, which didn't exist. So then I had to do that in December. Again, I have, I believe as I spent all this time that we're in a dangerous zone in terms of literacy with kids. And so I've created a platform called Write With Your Kids where I'm sharing the principles of what I've done for the last five years and now with the new books with the other grandkids. And then we've ended up finding hundreds of little kids around the world that over the years have published books. And so we're trying to feature them. I call those young writers around the world. So this is the, so Brady decided he wanted to have a skinless baboon. And so the artist, as you can see, created his skinless baboon. And that's his favorite. I love that. i it's always magical when you get the artwork back, isn't it? It's like yeah, Christmas. Every email you're opening up, you're getting more. Black and white is a lot cheaper than it is trying to get color for the interior of your books. So especially if you've got a fantasy, having an artist that can do the black and white and add the details that you need is amazing. So I guess my final point is bringing the ideas and the words together with the illustrations and the design to me is the key to the model. So thank you. Yeah, you can get in touch with me if you need to. Rick Williams Connected Gmail. I'm happy to help anybody. And uh, now the goal is I need to get three to four books out a year. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Bye, Rick. It was nice seeing you again. Okay. Seeing you. Thanks, Vasti.